old iron factory heads for a set of uh, Edelbrock aluminum 87cc performer. <laughs> So the first thing I need to do is get this 1971 Fiat 124 up from underneath the lift. Yeah, that'll get it. I think we know we got a bad head gasket here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull as many of the header bolts as I can from underneath. Well, that wasn't very tight. Well, of course this one is rounded off. Okay. That didn't work like I thought it would. Get this up in the hole. That actually was working until it exploded. Now I have this. It's an engraving bit. Oh, that did it. Okay, the headers are down. Nice clearance over on this side. And on this side, this gasket got shredded. It was caught on that remaining part of the bolt. Spark plug wires are gone. Now I need to get this mess of wires. Well, I think I've liberated the engine from wires and brackets and accessories. Take manifold is off. Well, time to go nuclear on the valley pan. That thing is glued down full perimeter with RTV. I tried prying it, no luck. There's quite a bit more to this thing than I had imagined. Pretty complex. I don't know that I see any sign of a head gasket issue. It's got some yucky stuff there. This head bolt was barely torqued and this one here wasn't very tight at all. The bolt I was worried about having clearance and in fact it won't come out so when I reinstall the head I'll have to put that bolt in there. For what do I do now? I know what I'd like to do. I'd like to just put some new heads on. What are you doing? Mr. Clean. <laughs> Mr. Clean. Pierre's decided that it could be cleaner. Yeah, I'm epically failing. Just the sponge is getting on there. That is what you call milkshake. This is a ratcheting adapter for the breaker bar. These are great for turning the engine. PB blaster. Let's try to get the carbon off the piston. High spots are gone, and that's the best I can hope for. I just realized I'd better clean up these exhaust ports. Just a little bit carbon on the uh, top of the piston travel, the, just a ring ridge there. I'm using 800 grit to clean the deck. I bought the ARP studs as recommended by Butler to go with the Edelbrock head. And reading the instructions, they highly recommend that you chase the threads, which I didn't even think about. This is the factory bolt. There's the groove. On this head, I have to remember, this bolt has to go in before I install the head. Grease the bolts. Wheel the cart over by the car. Grab a head gasket. Spray it. Two coats. Apply the head gasket. Grab the head. Drop it on the block. Start with the short bolts. Thread them all in, finger tight. There's the problem stud. I don't know. Yep.
Got it. I have no idea what this cam spec is. We'll check the exhaust first and then the intake. I'm using the vice grip garage method of determining push rod length. There's a link in the description. This washer has about the same arc as the casting. I've got my level line from the center of the washer to the center of the roller. I'm gonna remove this hydraulic lifter and replace it with a solid I picked up for 15 bucks from Comp Cams. This is the hydraulic and this is the solid. You can see the solid's a little bit further down the hole. Which makes sense because the hydraulic lifter will be pushed down slightly with the preload. Adjustable push rods in there. I've got a dial indicator set up to find my full lift and then find my half lift. This is a dry erase marker to show the rocker arm to valve contact point. I'm adjusting this so that the marker line is parallel to the top of the valve cap. So now I'll count the turns. One, two, three, five, and back. I'm gonna zero lash that and I'll run it through a cycle and see how it ends up. There's a max lift. I'm turning the engine to get the valve at half lift, where the black line should again be parallel to the valve cap. How did we do? The witness line should be in the middle of the valve stem. Looks like it's a little on the far side, but I think it's okay. I lock this down. I remove the push rod. I want to lift this lifter out. And I want to put the stock one back in. And then adjust it to zero lash. 9.318 inches, rounded up to 9.350. What's in the paint can? Nice and oily. That's the firing order, stacked. These are the cylinders. When six is on overlap, one will be on compression, or vice versa. Right now we've got it top dead center. Number six is on overlap and that makes number one on compression. I installed 15 poly locks and the 16th one, as is common in automotive maintenance, stripped out. And it got me thinking, well, that's not a whole lot of thread. So I'm gonna have to have to pull them all out and put a washer underneath, or maybe even two washers underneath each lock here. And one washer on this side. That's way better than what we had before. After doing six of eight cylinders, I realized I was supposed to be adding assembly lube below the push rod and the roller tip, and also the pivot ball. This is the lifter preload. I'm locking down the poly locks. 20 foot pounds. I tried to use a little less silicone. This is take two. I went crazy the first time. The exhaust crossover insert goes here. Drop the intake. The perimeter bolts are all in finger tight. I lost a specialty washer that goes here, so I just ground down a standard washer. Price are done. Tortilla to 40 foot pounds. That's not the cleanest install I've ever seen, but the thing about Trans Ams is the bird is the word, and the hood stays down at car shows. Don't forget the greasy carburetors. Maybe a little too much grease. Oh yeah, four barrels. This baby can drink gas when those things are open. Got the headers in, but I had to remove them because you can't get that bolt in. So this goes in first, and then the header slides in. Install the passenger side header. I had to remove the oil filter housing. And I'm afraid I'm gonna have to pull the starter. That little devil, I just can't reach it. Ha. 
I might do it. Headers are torqued. It was a hassle. I used a universal joint with tape to give it some rigidity. A cut off wrench and a little bit meat taken off around the open end. And this is a super thin wrench from Amazon. And then just your standard Craftsman 3.8. With the factory heads, this last spark plug was next to impossible. Oh yeah, I'm in. Oh, the, <laughs> just for that alone made these heads worthwhile. This is the cold case radiator that I had installed in the Trans Am. It really wasn't doing a great job of cooling. Uh, I watched uh, Fast Monty's channel and he recommends these fall high performance cooling fans, 14 inches. So I'm gonna try to open up this fan shroud. This gap here is a little bit too big. Just kind of close it up with that. Aircon, power steering, and alternator are installed. I've upgraded the alternator for the bigger fans. Naturally, only after I installed the alternator bracket did I find the special washer I was missing. But I think that'll be just fine. Ignition on. I've got the fan switch here. Oh, sh I fried them. Well, the electric fans ate a 30 amp fuse. I've disconnected one of the two fans. One fan instead of two. Okay, I'm gonna try to start it. Now, there's no oil in the lifters, so when it starts, it's gonna sound like it may not start right away. There's no fuel in the carburetor, but that's good because I kind of want to let it get some oil pressure before it hits. Total Fast and the Furious here. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> well, it'd be so That's cool. a little bit of the 80s with the 70s. Okay. Can anything explode? Uh, unlikely. Okay, I'm going to step back. <laughs> I got all the pressure. I smell gas now. Why is your jacket all Why is smoke tape? coming out of the hood? That seems not normal. Ooh, it smells really bad. Yeah, something's I think it's the header paint. Um where is your fire extinguisher? Yeah. Well, they used to be. Here's the kitchen one. Oh, yeah, it's blistering. This is that crappy paint I put on. It's not good. Gun oil filter gripping on the exhaust. Idle bump is this one. Now keep the idle bump up. All right. Success. Please don't look like Milche. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, I don't, I think that's good. Even though I only drove a few miles and cut open the filter, it looks great. No metal, oil looks good. Added a few switches here. This is an override switch for one of the two fans. If I go to this position here, it'll run on the battery. Also its own sensor would run it. So if the car is hot, the fan could run until it cools down. This position here is just off, so no matter what, the fan's not gonna run. In case I'm going down the highway, I just want one fan to run for some reason. I've got oil pressure, water temperature, and this is air-fuel ratio. This is the override for the second fan. If I'm running the air, I really want both these switches. Bypass the heater and bump the idle for the AC. 
It's also kind of handy in the winter to give it a little bit more idle. So this is dim, back to bright. But if I want to go back to 1977, I can turn these switches off and now it's 1977. I don't have this, any of this digital stuff in my face or anything. After the first drive, it's time to retorque the head gaskets. I popped the cap off the radiator and that looks like, I mean, it looks like the coating from the head gasket, the copper coating is floating in the coolant. But as Derek from Vice Grip Garage would say, I'm just gonna pretend I didn't see that. I can remove this valve cover with the air con in place, but I won't be able to get the torque wrench on those last bolts. So this is gonna have to come out. AC's up and out of the way. Got the spark plug wires. Well, wow, that one moved. That moved a lot. I wanted longer spark plug wires, specifically the short ones. The long ones were okay. I bought these MSD cut your own. Yeah, don't cut it too short, Amore. I get a little extra just for good measure. Stripper gauge. Does it dance? <laughs> you can leave. It does dance. <laughs> yeah. That should be fine. Then, bend this tab over. That goes in there. Then you go there. And then I'm gonna squish it. It says, crimp this with pliers, but don't crimp too hard. Okay. Right, so don't over crimp it. But it doesn't say don't under crimp either. Now it's a Trans Am. This car, is an animal. Oh my! She looks good. 